She ain't done, y'all. So basically, they're trying to take they're trying to take Trump down. It's obvious at this point. Right. You know, before he gets into the White House, because they know once Trump gets in the White House, it's over. And there's a reason why Trump put Alina Haba on the New York City Judge Engeron case and then put Alina Haba on the Georgia election case with Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade. Now, what we're witnessing, guys, what we're witnessing is a coordinated attack, uh, a witch hunt, if you will, a placement of attorney generals with an S that are systemically positioned to interfere. And this thing here, it, it is literally it's just heating up, guys. All right. And this is this is really just getting me so fired up. I mean, in fact, listen to Alina Haba as she calls for all of these cases to just be thrown out a and a massive investigation be opened on the corruption of these planted attorney generals. Now, before I get into this, guys, all I ask is that you guys take a second, kindly drop a quick like for the video. Uh, I really do appreciate your support. I want to thank you so much, you guys, for always sharing these videos and getting the truth out there that the mainstream media does not want us to know about. And they do our best. They do their best to hide it from us. But take a listen to what uh, take a listen to what Alina Haba is saying here, because this here, guys, is wild. Just about the, this case. What does it tell you about all of the cases? First, let's start. Miss Willis went into a church, a religious house. If anybody has any morals or moral compass, how dare you go into a religious house and cry racism? That, to me, was the lowest point of all of this, I have to be honest with you, no matter what those texts say. And I'm sure we'll see what they say, and they will say what we think. How does it relate to all these cases? I hope it opens the door, Jesse, to us looking at all the DAs, all the AGs, communications between the White House, the administration, and collusion between all of them in bringing these cases the same year, even though some of these cases are years and years and years old, had no investigation or investigations for years and then waited until he was the candidate and obvious candidate uh, for the Republican Party and nominee. So I would like it to open the door. I hope we get those texts, but let's look into everything. I fear that we can't do that until we have a different administration in place. But more importantly, it's time for the American people to see the corruption I've seen, the destruction I've seen to the judicial system. It is deep. They are coordinating. And there is no question that her texts with Mr. Wade are just the beginning. Wow, guys. Wow. And this ain't even the half of it. So the fire department in New York City, they decided to go ahead and backtrack what they said earlier about hunting down the firefighters who booed Letitia James and cheered Donald Trump on. Yeah. So there were earlier reports. Uh, there were some earlier reports that had come out and basically an internal email from from brass that generated half a week of bad press for the fire department. But now now the fire department is, is saying that at no point has there been an investigation into the members that are booing. Now, they're, they're trying to like act like this, that, 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 like they're trying to act like they never said this. Like, this is unbelievable, guys. So. It really definitely looks like this is a big win for Trump. A New York City council member, Joanne Ariola, compared it to when Mayor Bill de Blasio was booed by the police department on multiple occasions, mind you. And we all saw what happened to the police department, the NYPD, during the Bill de Blasio administration and how it ultimately was destroyed and dismantled. Do we... <laughs> Do we need to really do go that way uh, with the New York City Fire Department? I mean, they said that they cannot let remnants from that administration uh, do that to our firefighters. So I, I just want to know about you from you guys. What do you think about this? Like, do we need to let this happen to our firefighters? Now, in other news, <clears throat> Judge Scott McAfee, he's allowing Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis to continue on this election subversion case against Donald Trump, but she was forced to lose special prosecutor Nathan Wade after a very embarrassing two months that put Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade on trial themselves over there. <clears throat> let's just say under the covers, uh, under the table, uh, romantic relationship. Now it's a technical legal win for Fannie Willis and she may uh, continue to stay on this case along with her full office as of now. Prosecuting 
Donald Trump and 14 others, or at least attempting to do so. But uh, Judge McAfee's 23-page opinion was a scathing rebuke of the district attorney's actions. And it remains very unclear at this point if Trump's going to be able to uh, face trial before November on his actions after the 2020 presidential elections. Now, his supporters are saying that Trump is the true winner in, in this decision on Fannie Willis in this Georgia case. So will Trump actually come out on top of Fannie Willis and, and, and James? Well, it's definitely looking like it at this point. So uh, I want to go ahead and give you guys the, the, the breakdown here. So some political po commentators, they're literally saying that New York Attorney General Letitia James, she pretty much laid the groundwork for those booze herself. So take a listen. Knowing them, they probably had cameras everywhere. Uh, but the whole thing is <clears throat> a great point because it was like the, the beginning of booing was loud. But then you had just like a bed music of Trump, Trump, Trump. It kind of helped the whole night flow a little bit. A little <laughs> not for her. Like, but <laughs> she but didn't the, feel that way. this sentiment is what you get, not when you try people, when you don't try criminals, and when you obsess over Donald Trump, and you sit in the front row and you gloat and kick your shoes off and give little speeches after each uh, day on trial, mm. and then gloat on Twitter every day how much interest Donald Trump has to pay every day he doesn't come up with the ridiculous amount of money of $450 million. So you lay the groundwork for anger and bitterness. And a lot of firefighters say, you know, Donald Trump is my guy. He's very popular with cops. He's very popular with firefighters. And why she came out at a promotional ceremony, she does it at her own peril. When you're a public figure, you know at any moment, we know it at Fox, you can get booed or cheered. That comes with the territory. Tough. And you know what, Molly? We are her boss. Right? Uh, or I, I am. I'm, I live in this town. Meaning that so too are those firefighters. FDNY, they pay her salary too. So sh why shouldn't she be subjected to some scrutiny? And I will say, as a New York taxpayer, I don't want my tax dollars going to hunting down FDNY. Mm. How about you protect them? How about you hunt down the criminals that are writ large in this city, terrifying everyone? Get off Trump's back. Get off the FDNY's back. Go do your job, Letitia James. I boo her too. I Wow. <laughs> wow. Right. And, and, you know, that's that's why it came as no surprise to me when the fire department in New York backtracked their early statements about investigating the firefighters. Now, they're reversing course at this point and they're basically saying, hey, guys, at no point was there any kind of investigation into the members that were booing. Even after we saw these reports about an internal email from Brass that generated like half a week of bad press for the fire department. Right. But some even say that all firefighters should have staged a walkout. They should have just boycotted until these threats were retracted and an official apology be given. I mean, people are just outraged. And, you know, basically they, 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 they dared threaten firefighters for practicing their First Amendment rights. I mean, can you believe this? So anyway, uh, FDNY Chief of Department uh, John Hodgins, he said that, um, he was said to have emailed high-ranking FDNY officials saying that the fire department's Bureau of Investigations and Trials is investigating this. So they 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 basically fig they they will basically figure uh, out who the members are, even if they don't come forward. Right now, he said supposedly that he recommends that they come forward and that it will be better for them if they came forward and that the official that way the officials won't have to hunt them down but they're trying to backtrack on the statement here guys so this definitely did not sit well with a lot of people you know the purported persecution fired up current and former members of the department's rank and file you know as well as the public i mean a lot of you guys are not happy about what they're talking about what they're saying here what they're doing right and this is all in response to Letitia james like, why is there such an uproar about booze to Letitia James? I mean, like, the, Bill, de ba Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York, got booed by the fire department or by the police department. Nothing happened after that. Uh, Laura Kavanaugh got booed. Nothing happened, ha ha nothing happened after that. So anyway, so Staten Island attorneys, uh, Louis Gerlamino, along with uh, his partner, Mark Fonte at the F&G Legal Group, they ultimately had offered to uh, represent any firefighters under departmental investigation 
pro bono for free. So uh, basically they're saying that the FDI, FDNY officials were uh, making a mountain out of a molehill. And in the sense, it was kind of a smattering of booze when Letitia James took the stage. It wasn't a real outpouring. You know, it was like, a, you know, a smattering at best. And it was like, what, 15, 20 seconds of Trump chants. That's it. So what's the big deal? So FDNY uh, spokesman Jim Long, he basically tried to play it down, saying that nobody's hunting anyone down. Sure, buddy. Right. And that they were, you know, looking into these individuals who clearly broke department regu regulations. Well, if you're not hunting them down, why are you looking into them to find out who broke department regulations? Right. So anyway, so Long said it had nothing to do with politics. Do you, do you guys believe that? You think it has nothing to do with politics? You think that the New York City uh, Trump case with the you know $450 million penalty assessed by Judge Engeron had nothing to do with Trump running for uh, re-election in 2024? Do you think that this case against uh, Donald Trump in Georgia with Judge McAfee and Fannie Willis has nothing to do with Trump running for president re-election in, in 2024? I mean, let's be real, guys. They're, they're, the fact that they think that we're that dumb is literally offensive. And it's about professionalism at an official event held in a house of God, a house of worship, right? But like I said, when I first heard them saying this, like, so why the need to clarify that they're not hunting anyone down? You know what I mean? Anyway, so, you know, then, then of course, you got you got to know how much trouble that they were in. I mean, after all the outrage, you guys have been sharing these videos. Everyone knows what's going on and they know how people are angry. They're upset. They're pissed off about this. Right. There's abuse of power, the corruption. Unbelievable. Right. Anyway, so the department had further tried to soften the language, basically saying that instead of investigations, um, that they were having ongoing conversations with their members about decorum during department events to ensure that they're upholding the, the core values that make the FDNY the greatest fire department in the world. I mean, come on, guys. The New York City Fire, Com uh, New York City fire Commissioner Laura Cavanaugh, she had a rocky tenure. Let's not forget, she was never a firefighter before joining the FDNY as a, as a civilian official in 2017, never. And after becoming commissioner, she basically feuded with her own former top chiefs last, last year when they asked to be demoted in response to her policies. They were like, F it, screw it, I'm out, right? And this is why lawyers said that she needs to do a better job of connecting with the rank and file again, right? Now, just a little quick pause here, guys. If you guys are appreciating the, the conversation, the content, I totally appreciate you guys hitting the like button for the video. We got to get this message out here. And I want to thank you guys so much for always sharing the videos. You, you guys are amazing. But anyway, um, so still in support of those firefighters that booed Attorney General Letitia James and basically kind of like chanted the name of former President Donald Trump, New York City Councilwoman uh, Joanne Ariola warned that there should be no retribution for this. I mean, she compared it to the time that Mayor Bill de Blasio was booed by the police department on multiple occasions, mind you, not just once. And, you know, how they all saw what happened to the police department during the de Blasio administration and how it was ultimately destroyed and dismantled, right? So Ariola warned that we can't let this happen again. Ariola said that the firefighters should be protected under the Constitution. Why do we have to remind these people, right? So they absolutely should not lose their jobs as this was their First Amendment right. Now, some commentators are even arguing that Letitia James booing was warranted given how it's usually the city, the city mayor that's invited to... Um, it's usually the city mayor that's invited to ceremonies like this, right? So first of all, she's not, the attorney general for New York City is normally not at these events. They're normally greeted by the mayor. So even if these weren't necessarily Trump supporters, there may very well have been a big disappointment. Like, yo, where's the mayor? Why are we getting this watered down uh, uh, 
attorney general. We don't want to see her. We want to see the mayor of the city. Where is Mayor Eric Adams? Right. So anyway, not to mention her legal cases against Trump, which a lot of his supporters say are part of a much bigger political witch hunt against the former president, Donald Trump. And I heard a lot of comments from you guys that are saying that Letitia James should be locked up for treason. Now, I, you know, what do you guys think about that? You know, these are the kind of comments that I'm reading and I and and clearly people are not happy with what they're doing with this power. And, you know, speaking of lawyers, like a lot of these lawyers clearly seem to have it out for Trump. Now, did you guys hear about what Georgia D.A. Fannie Willis uh, said? Anyway, so Judge Scott McAfee, he announced his decision already to uh, basically a couple days ago, allowing Fannie Willis to continue on this election subversion case against Donald Trump. But she was forced to lose her sweetheart, special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, after a very embarrassing couple of months that put Nathan Wade and Fannie Willis on trial themselves over this romantic relationship. So anyway, um, Fannie Willis, she technically scored a legal victory here since she and her team can keep going after Donald Trump and like 14 other people. But Judge McAfee, he wasn't exactly handing out compliments in his 23 page critique of how Fannie Willis goofed things up. And 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 so anyway, uh, some people even said that it was a scathing rebuke of the uh, district attorney's actions. So the judge actually kind of went off on her. And I want you guys to let me know, why do you think they, that the judge didn't just boot everyone off this case? Why didn't he just throw the whole dang thing out? Do you think that Judge McAfee is corrupt? Do you think that this was a political move so that the judge could keep his job because he knows he's up for re-election re soon? I mean, what do you guys think about this? Do you think that Fannie Willis should stay on the Trump case for Georgia in Fulton County? Anyway, but it's still kind of up in the air whether Trump will end up in court before November for his uh, post-2020 election actions. I see y'all going off in the comments. I'm going to get to you guys in just a second. But Judge McAfee, he decided it was a choice between Wade and Willis staying on the case because of what he called the odor of mendacity remaining over the circumstances of their relationship. Now, I don't know what they did in the office after hours. That's their business, right? Between Nathan Wade and Fannie Willis. Uh, but Wade, you know, he didn't waste a whole lot of time after that, you know, ultimately resigned just a few hours later. So <laughs> I think he was kind of like, hey, it's enough pressure. Fannie, you know, it's, it's been fun. It's been real. I'm out. <laughs> so anyway, he said he was stepping down in the interest of democ democracy in uh, dedication to the American public and to move the case forward as quickly as possible. Very, very uh, politically well worded, right? But yeah, guys, Fannie Willis survives, but the DA and her case are definitely wounded. They definitely took a hit. And Fannie Willis managed to dodge getting kicked off the case, but the whole drama about her uh, and Nathan Wade, it definitely is going to leave a bit of a mark. You may need to put some cocoa butter on that, right? But this, it, it, it's, it's not just about what happens in court, you know, where, where, where you can bet potential jurors have heard the gossip. It's also out there in the public with people watching very closely like you guys. You know, as they decide, as we decide whether, you know, Donald Trump gets another shot at the presidency in November. So, you know, McAfee, though, he did not hold back. So Judge Scott McAfee, he was basically criticizing Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade calling out their relationship as it is, as being the result of some bad choices. And that's putting it nicely. Now, you know, he also pointed out that according to Georgia law, Making poor choices, even a whole bunch of them, isn't enough to say that there's a legal conflict of interest, according to Judge Scott McAfee. Now, a lot of people disagree with this. Both Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade ended up testifying in the hearing. But let me tell you guys, when Willis hit the stand, it was quite the scene. So she walked up in the courtroom, ready to clap back at the accusations. However, when Judge Scott McAfee gave his verdict, he wasn't exactly cheering about Willis's passionate testimony, calling it uh, calling it unprofessional of the Georgia DA. 
She called. He called Fannie Willis's performance unprofessional of a Georgia DA. I mean, that's a slap in the face coming from the judge to Fannie Willis. Now, anyway, so judge went ahead and wrote that his findings is by no means an indication that the court condones this tremendous lapse in, in judgment or unprofessional manner of the district attorney's testimony during the evidentiary hearing. But let me tell you guys, Trump just keeps racking up the wins. But get this, like, I don't understand how you just kind of gloss over this, this perjury that took place under oath. We heard it like I, I know that this perjury charge is likely to come back. So I'm definitely going to keep an eye on this one and keep you guys updated on that. But let me tell you guys. So Trump just kind of keeps racking up these wins here. So the ruling on Friday, it's kind of a win win for Trump, right? It's kind of helping him buy some time in his fight against four different criminal charges and ultimately giving him a chance to kind of flip the script on the prosecutors that are going after him. So Trump's legal team. They've been pretty savvy using all sorts of tactics to kind of push back the trial dates that could have kept him off the campaign trail this year. So Trump's got a very good uh, legal team. It's kind of a beast, honestly. You know, over in Washington, Washington, D.C., Trump's case about, you know, trying to mess with the election. It's on pause right now. The Supreme Court, they're set to listen to arguments in April about, you know, whether he's got immunity from all this stuff. Meanwhile, in Florida, you got a judge appointed by Trump himself. Um, he's expected to pick up a, a, a pick a new date for the trial over the classified documents pretty soon, following a discussion about when to do it a couple of weeks back. Then, of course, there's New York, where um, Donald Trump was about to face a trial in no time. But now it's been pushed to at least mid-April. Why? Well, because tens of thousands of new pages of evidence have been turned over by the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan. And but it's not just about delaying. Trump's defense is also playing offense. They're 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 trying to turn the spotlight on this heap of, of charges of, you know, to poking holes in the credibility of prosecutors and and ultimately shaking people's trust in the legal system. And it seems to be working. In fact, Scott McAfee, the judge in, in Georgia, he highlighted on Friday how even the hint of a conflict, if the public sees it that way, it can literally shake the faith in the justice system. And letting that aside or, or letting that slide, you know, he, he says he pointed out literally that it could really hurt the legitimacy and the moral authority of what he calls the weakest branch of government. So, uh, oh, and get this, guys, McAfee also criticized the, the the speech that Fannie Willis did in her church. Did y'all hear about uh, about that Fannie Willis church speech? He even suggested that a gag order could follow a gag order, guys. Why would you have to bring out a gag order? Why aren't these people in power behaving as they should? You want to yell at the firefighters? Where where's the where's the legal system outcry? for the misbehavior of attorney generals and district attorneys. Where's that? Now, during the speech earlier this year, Fannie Willis defended Nathan Wade, suggesting that he was being targeted because he was a black man, not because of <laughs> all of the uh, uh, conflict of interests that have been presented in the trial. Fannie Willis was saying that Nathan Wade was being targeted because he was a black man. Is that the case here? Is Nathan, was Nathan Wade being targeted because he's black? So the speech in January pretty much got dragged into the whole debate by the defendants. You know, they argued Willis, Fannie Willis was publicly shaming Trump and his legal team um, and risking a fair trial. McAfee also said that the comments were far enough removed from a jury trial that it would not establish a permanent taint of the jury pool and basically said that the court cannot find that this speech crossed the line to the point where the defendants have been denied the opportunity for a fundamentally fair trial or that it requires the district attorney's disqualification. Now, I, I don't know. I, I disagree with that. I think a lot of people feel like Fannie Willis should have been disqualified from the case along with Nathan Wade. But, you know, he also added that it was still legally improper as this 
particular type of uh, of 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 public comment, it creates dangerous waters for the district attorney uh, to wade further into. But um, but I, I, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it with you guys. What do you guys think about all of this? I mean, this is this is wild. It's getting wilder. The updates seem to be coming out faster and faster. Um, I know it's Sunday morning. A lot of you guys might still be in church or just have left church. Um, what do you guys think about this? I mean, isn't this crazy? Uh, we got Billy French in the comments. I got Laura Holland. Uh, I see you, Gonzo. Um, we got uh, we got Queen in the house. Rashindo Rayuk, uh, Rico. Uh, Miss Todd Maynard. So, uh, oh, thank you so much, guys. Happy Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, uh, <laughs> hey, let's just say happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. Everybody in the comments, just say happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy. Is anybody drinking today? Anybody uh, going to, you know, hit any uh, bars, pubs, pop any bottles? Let me know in the comments, which I got planned for today. Um, but yeah, um, this is crazy. Laura Holland says Fanny has followers. Uh, she definitely does. Uh, she definitely has followers. Um, uh, Saint 13, always the race car that they have always left. Uh, let's see. This is evil going on, they're saying. Uh, yeah, I hear you, Laura. Asians for Trump till the end, according to Tommy. Uh, Billy French. How about you'd how how about you'd act? How would you act if someone tried to steal a hundred dollars from you? Ron for president. Oh no, no thank you. I'm not running for president. I I, I would not want that pressure. No thank you. Uh, but thanks for considering me. Thanks thanks for the nomination. <laughs> um, let's see, Ashford and Simpson. The DAs and the AGs should be fired and very possibly lose their licenses, according to Pamela Carlson. Appreciate your feedback. Um, let's see. We got Jeff Gooden, Trump 2024. Um, so who's pushing for Trump? Who's pushing for Biden in 2024 here in the live with us today? Man, we got like 1,400 people in here. Hey, if you guys haven't dropped a, a like for the video, please. Take a second. It's totally free. Hit the like button for the video. Let's get this message out here, guys. I want to thank you so much for sharing this video. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. I hope you enjoy your Sunday. You guys stay blessed, and I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Be safe, you guys.